we have some new Mirror's Edge Catalyst details. We actually have a developer diary. They released their first, well, really their second one, if you consider the one from E3 2014. It was kind of a developer diary as well. But this one has to do with the gameplay of the game, so I'm expecting to see some new footage. I have not seen this yet. This is going to be a first reactions. Uh, so let's transition over to the web page. So here we have uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst Dev Diary gameplay. Directly from the DICE team, get the details about the thrilling gameplay of Mirror's Edge Catalyst in an all-new Dev Diary. I love this shot of her, by the way, this screenshot right here. It's a great screenshot. And also this one, too. Both of these are just fantastic. On top of learning how groundbreaking movement from the first Mirror's Edge has been refined, you'll get inside details on combat, free roaming, and why Faith won't use guns. Furthermore, the DICE sound team will explain how your in-game actions will affect the dynamic soundtrack, once again created by composer Solar Fields. Enjoy the video and stay tuned to mirrorsedge.com for more dev diaries. Pretty freaking sweet. So as we're wrapping up closer to, you know, the, uh, the release of the game, uh, they're going to start giving us some more gameplay, which is great, you know, this, this is nice, because we, we virtually know nothing, you know, major about the game. They, they really showed us so little, considering it's an open world game, they really showed us so little, and I'm kind of thankful for that, but at the same time, it's like, I really want to see more of the game, but I, I do understand the decision, I, I do like that they've been very, um... They haven't been very, you know, pushy with, like, the media for the game. It's sort of like, okay, we're going to give you a snippet here and there. And basically, yeah. So on my email this morning at 7 a.m., uh, I got this email from them, and they basically said I could watch it early. Um, it says, welcome, frontrunners. And probably you guys did, too, as if you signed up for the newsletter. Get ready for our brand new div diary and what you'll learn, why you use the weapons. Wait, where you'll learn why the use of weapons was cut, how gameplay connects with music, and how the City of Glass will challenge your traversal and movement skills and all front runners get early access viewing. So basically, this is actually pretty cool. If you sign up for the newsletter, you get to watch early you know, videos and things like that. And afterwards, we'll take a look at the mag rope. I read this yesterday, but we'll take a look. It's at, it has a name officially now, the mag rope, which is cool. So, all right, let's watch this. I am super excited. I'm gonna pump up my speakers. Let's do it. Watch it in HD. Got music. Oh, hold on, it's not even full screen. Oh god. God. I love the music. <laughs> the gameplay of the first Mirror's Edge was very appealing in the sense that it gave players this new way of looking at first person shooters where you would focus on actually traversing the terrain instead of shooting your way through. Mirror's Edge Catalyst. It's a game about running, walking, jumping, leaping, rolling, and fighting. Mm. <laughs> Most striking the difference between the first game and uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst is the free roaming. So we've created a big city, the City of Blast, that the player gets to experience. You will also oh my have God. access to a variety of side missions, ranging from delivery missions to saving runners in distress. So you really can decide your own path. You will use Fate's Momentum to combat your enemies. The different enemy archetypes will require you to use different skills. And this new combat Ooh. system is essentially a lot more personal. Yeah? What else is new? <laughs> if it sounds good, whatever it looks like, it will look better. It will feel better because you get to percussively connect all the dots God. on the screen in front of you. Things that worked really well in the last music was the soundtrack, the music by Sony Fields. So we've got him back into do our game, and we've made the music even more responsive to how the player decides to play the game. So when you run, we have more percussion. If you stop still, we'll have pass through chords. Basically, you control how the music plays while you're really. Game. We oh, really that's want cool. The player to instantly be able to feel the flow, like the runner's flow. We don't want to challenge you with doing a move. You should be able to know how to do a move. But the skill comes from where in the environment is the best route to go. Can't wait for, for us to release this game and people to finally get their hands on it. Take this strong character and this unique gameplay and bring that out as an alternative to all the other games. It's a powerful feeling. You will see the elegance of the city and they will want to be part of that. You have five seconds to comply. <laughs> that emotion. That's what I like. Good 
lord, the game looks amazing. I love that soundtrack, by the way. That that was awesome. So we got a lot of new gameplay in there. This game doesn't even look like it should be possible. Like, the art style and everything, it just, it looks out of this world. Like, it, it literally looks like a fantasy, you know? So, my god. It's pretty cool, I like that. It's only three minutes long, but they gave us a lot of gameplay in that. And, uh... Here, let's take a look at the trailer. I'm gonna stop it this time and take a look at some things. I love this this beginning. Ooh, there's some new gameplay. All right, so here's some combat situation, and I but my my God, I hope that they put the soundtrack for like sale the same day as the game, or even as a. Uh, I don't, I don't know if they're going to include it in the Collector's Edition. I don't think that they mentioned it, that they're going to include it in the Collector's Edition, but I hope that they do. Or at least just, you know, do what The Witcher 3... I think The Witcher 3 did with... If you just bought the main game, they just gave you the soundtrack. But I would love to have this on disc. I just... I, I love the tone of it. All right, so... That's pretty cool. I want to know, does... I, I assume he's going to fly back and hit that guy, but let's see. Yeah, he does. Okay. So the, there's interactable uh, combat and things like that, and here's uh, some new gameplay. Jeez, the only the only thing about you know a YouTube video like this is the motion blur is just so intense and it's also compressed. And when you have really intense motion blur and a compressed video being streamed, it doesn't really make for a really high quality video. I'm sure it's gonna look better when the game comes out, but one of the great things, one of the things I'm happy about playing this on PC is I get to turn the motion blur down because the motion blur on, on the Frostbite games just, it, it's a little bit too heavy for me. I mean, I, I'm not a big motion blur guy. I don't, I, I don't mind the effect as long as it's not intruding. You know, I don't mind a, a light amount of motion blur, but when I'm doing this, like, I, I can't I can like barely see anything on the side of my screen. It's this is way too intense for me, but I, I digress. That's I just wanted to, to, to get that out there, but I'm gonna turn the motion blur down significantly when I play this. It's pretty cool. I don't know if you guys noticed, um I found this out uh, a few a few weeks ago, but there really hasn't been gameplay and stuff to check, but on her shoes, if you take a take a look at like a higher quality picture on her shoes it says evade. Um, which is pretty nice, so it's a little good touch there, so pretty cool. Here's that shot of the crane again. Overlooking the city, beautiful city. Large city. The gameplay of the first Mirror's Edge was very appealing in the sense that it gave players this So there's, uh, there's the writer. I have some of these guys, I have some of these guys I added to on LinkedIn. So, um, which is pretty nice. Where you would focus on actually traversing the terrain instead of shooting your way through. Yeah, there's, I love that. That's there's a good shot, look at this. <laughs> it's a game about rup. All right, so let's take a look at this. This, uh, just some parkour levels walking. and stuff. Ooh, hold on. I'm trying to see if I notice anything. It's just a construction site. Very white, bright colors. Awesome, the Callahan symbol down there. And then, uh, I wonder, I actually, I'm actually curious whether this construction site is like a throwback to the training level in the original Mirror's Edge. I wonder if this is like the training level, you know, like, like this, like footage, if they're going to have something like that, I'm not really sure, but I wonder if that's the case. Um, I would expect them to have a training level considering the game is so original, you know, and, uh, there's a lot of people who didn't play the mirror, the first Mirror's Edge who are going to be playing this. Um, so I would assume they would have a training level and stuff to teach you the new mechanics and things like that. So um, this may be it, I'm not sure. Walking, jumping, leap. Oh my god, I'm gonna turn off the reticle, I'm gonna turn off everything. No HUD, I, that's how I like to play Mirror's Edge, no HUD at all. Fighting. So you've seen before. The difference between the first game and uh, Mirror's this, catalyst is the free world. this is new, huh? Another night, night city, um, or night, night scene. Excuse me. So I'm, I'm actually curious because you know we've seen civilians in the game. We've seen civilians, but I'm, I'm curious whether um, another, another one of my ideas in the, uh, in, in, in that video I keep referring back to um, was 
it'd be awesome if you can go on the ground level or go to like a, a big heavy civilian populated you know dense area in the city and as you're running due to all the propaganda surrounding the runners and keep in mind at the time we didn't know that the runners weren't going to be considered um uh transporters you know anymore uh, now they're just high-tech fees but i don't know if they're going to have propaganda towards the runners like they did in the first game but my idea was is that you would run through the city and things like that and you can go on the ground level like on the street and uh you can just run through crowds of people and people would like just freak out back away everyone would be like terrified of you considering all the propaganda surrounding the runners um during the first game for this game, I don't know if it's going to be similar. I, I assume people know of the runners, but I don't think that they're a big threat. I think what they're where they're going at is that, you know, everyone's kind of scared of the Black November group, and uh, the runners are kind of like a, you know, just a side thing that they don't really bother anyone. They just do their thing. So I don't know if they're going to, you know, if they're going to do something like that. I don't know if we're going to be able to, like, if it's just, oh, we can see civilians, or is it going to be like, okay, we can actually interact with some civilians, or civilians will interact with what we're doing in the game world. Um, I'm not really sure yet. Um, love this art direction, by the way. Just, I mean, just look at the complexity in the architecture, right? And, and just, when you're looking at the complexity of the architecture, and you're thinking to yourself, I can go through all of that, like right in front, I can literally run through all this, find a way through it. It's just amazing. I mean, how can you, I don't know how anyone can sit here and, and not just feel amazed or something. I mean, I know I'm like freaking ugly because I'm a big fan. We're all big fans, right? But for those of you guys who aren't necessarily humongous fans, you know, it's like, okay, this looks cool. This has to excite you. Just a scene like this, just knowing that you can just jump through all that, that, that has to get you, you know, really excited. So that's pretty awesome. Let's continue. City of Blast. By the way, their, their studio is so gorgeous, Dice. I, I really want to go there one day because they're, they're like right off the coastline and things like that, and they have this gorgeous view of like the lake with boats. My god, it's like one of the most gorgeous uh, game studios I've ever seen. Experience. There's another view at the city. We got more civilians. I'm, I'm looking at the civilians now, and it's kind of funny because the way that they're the way that they're shot in the scene, you don't see their faces, they're just black silhouettes. And I kind of like that because it's it's like they're just all basically, um, I, I would say, conforming citizens, you know? They, 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 they're kind of just your, 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 your workers. <laughs> um, you know how, you know, in, in like the, the common typical sci-fi storyline, something like regarding this where the corporations have power, everyone's like a mindless drone and does their thing. This kind of reminds me of it, just like the silhouette art art style kind of speaks for itself that everyone's just, you know, just a, a brainwashed fool in the city. Like, no, everyone's just being oppressed and the same. So this is pretty cool. You got a Kruger banner, nowhere to hide. We keep, we keep nothing safe we we keep something safe so i assume maybe they're going to oh it's it's a transitioning out all right i thought i thought you could like edit it or something like that that'd be cool we keep whatever safe um so looking at this again uh this is a great shot as well um again i just want to i just want to know how how is it just rooftops or can we go on street level and we already know that some buildings are accessible but how many buildings are accessible and i don't think that we're gonna get questions we're gonna get answers to these questions until we play the main game um but i'm hoping that street level i'm hoping that we could get street level if possible that would just add this extra layer of density and realism to the world that I think a lot of people would like. Not necessarily that you would go there for any particular reason, but it would be awesome to sit there and like jump over cars. I don't know how many of you guys know this, but the original target render for for Mirror's Edge um, actually showed Faith running on the ground level and parkouring across cars. Since then, that video, it, it, that video was up for like a brief um, amount of time and then they took it down but if you're lucky enough to see it the target render for Mirror's Edge and keep in mind the target render is not really gameplay it's it's all render it's basically like a it, it, it's a video showcasing what the vision is supposed to emulate basically um, so it's not live gameplay it's more like a video um, where, where everything it's supposed to look like it's actual gameplay if that makes sense it's for the designers so they know how to 
program and how, and how to get the look for the game down. Um, but in that video, they showed Faith kind of parkouring off a car, and she was hanging from ledges and shooting. And this is back when Faith originally had a gun in the original Mirror's Edge, before they decided to not give her a gun, and you had to go find weapons on your own. So, um, pretty cool. Uh, but I love this shot, and I'm hoping that we get to see street level, as well as most buildings being accessible. I can already see, um, looking at some of these buildings, like this building right here, if you see my mouse cursor, it, I mean, it looks open to go to, right? But the thing is, it looks empty. And, uh, I'm curious to see whether, okay, you can go into the interior spots, but there's nothing really in there. And I hope that's not the case. I hope some spots are be, are inhabited and i hope that some spot um interior spots are uh you know very dense with like furniture and things like that just make it look lively this just looks like a blank room so we'll see we'll also have i lived a time lapse video which is pretty cool a variety of side so a variety of side missions okay just before it starts so who is this guy i'm going to assume this guy's dressed in all black, so I'm only going to assume that this guy's with Black November. Or, this guy could be, I'm actually looking at him more closely, this guy could be, um, whatever that guy's name is, the, the guy who looks like Morgan Freeman. It could be that guy, because there's pigeons around him, and, uh, I believe he looks, he kind of looks black, at least from what I'm seeing. I think he's black. So, but it could, um, it, it could be him, so... Um, I, we don't know who his role is yet, unless we do know who his role is. I haven't, I haven't read the comics, keep that in mind. So, I have, it's funny, I have, I have, I pre-ordered the, the full comic set that comes in one book. Uh, it's supposed to come out the week before the game comes out, so I'm gonna get that shipped to me, I'm gonna read it all before the game comes out, and, uh, maybe then I'll know who this is if they revealed who this is in that comic, alright, so. So this is, this actually reminds me of Dying Light right here, is, is these kind of missions. So I'm going to assume, because they already mentioned that you're going to have these, um, you're going to have to disable, uh, like, ad banners, and then you can, like, post your own propaganda up in place of the ad banners. So I'm almost expecting that, that this, what she's doing right now, she's going to a location, and she's taking down a, a ad, an advertisement from, you know, the, the, the government, the city, uh, Kruger, or whatever, and she's going to replace it with her own hacked satellite. So we take a look at this. She grabs something. What does it come with? Looks. What is that? It looks like a... Um, hmm. I don't know. It looks like some, some electrical node or something like that. Some fuse. Uh, she also has no... Her, her mag rope is actually missing if you take a look at her hand there. So that's interesting. Um, this button is in desperate need of tessellation, <laughs> right here, like, like, if, look, it's so jaggy right here, so, need some tessellation on that button. So we got some other, uh, another shot right here. There's also, this wire needs tessellation as well. We don't know what they've been showing us as far as the graphical level, or even the, the version of the game. We don't know if this, this could be running on PlayStation 4, it could be running on Xbox One, it could be running on the PC. This could be medium settings, low set. I, I don't know. We don't know what the settings are like for for this game or, or how um, you know, like like what they're playing on. So, I I don't know. You know, we don't. We just don't know. So I guess the only way we're gonna find out is through the beta. You know, which we're still waiting on a release date for the beta. Um, it should be soon. I actually expected them to announce the beta release date in this video, but they did not. But all right. Well, you really can just. Pretty cool. Your own path in ah, I love that. See some nice cars, some civilians walking on the street. Again, I'm hoping that this shot is alluding to, yes, you can go on street level. I would, ju I just think it'd be awesome. Dodging cars and jumping over cars, you know, and things like that. I just think it'd be freaking awesome to do you that. Use Faith momentum to combat your enemies. The different enemy archetypes will bring Oh, and this is a shot, this is a shot right, I, I'm pretty sure right now, this is a shot of Faith flying on the drone. Enemy archetypes. I'm pretty sure, because the way, you can look at the camera, it's kind of shaking around, I'm pretty sure Faith jumped on the drone now, which is, I'm freaking excited that that ability is in there, that option, um, but taking a look here, I love the reflections off the glass here. Require you to use yeah. skills. 
So we got some more uh, combat situations. Oh, there's actually, if you take a look in the background, there's a lot of security back there. A lot. So she's fighting. This <laughs> freaking, she's such a badass. Yes. And this new oh. system is essentially a lot more personal. So this is uh, another thing. I don't know uh she looks. Hmm. This guy looks different, but I wonder if this guy is one of the runner cops. He might be one of the runner cops um, that was in the first game. You know, you had the pers I think they're called the pursuit cops. And um, I, uh, I I think that they're probably going to bring him back, but this may be our first look at the character model for him. He, he kind of looks similar if you take a look, you know. Um, he has a uh, you know, one of those a, a mask here, I guess, and then, you know, he's kind of like outfitted like the way the way he looks, he's kind of outfitted like to go running and things like that to chase down some people. So I'm almost expecting that this might be our first look at the pursuit cops back in the game. Yeah. What else is it? <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. If it sounds good, whatever it looks like, it will look better. By the way, if you take a look in the background, um, he, there's the Mirror's Edge Cup that they gave away at E3. And there's also, it looks like a Mirror's Edge controller, and it looks like it, you know, like in the background, it kind of looks like a symbol, like a Mirror's Edge uh, symbol on the controller there. I could be wrong, but this may allude to custom controllers coming out, more likely for um, Xbox One rather than PlayStation 4, because I haven't seen, in terms of PS4, what they do with their customization, their customized controllers, it's usually not really for third-party games, and if it is, it comes with a console bundle. So Microsoft usually, um, you know, does better with the customization options of which controller you can want. Um, so this may be alluding to custom controllers or things like that. So I guess we'll wait and see. I, I may be completely wrong, but you know, just taking a look, speculating. So, because you get to pick up or we connect with them. So we got we got some more scenes here. Look at this. I mean. This is crazy. She kicks the, we saw that, and then now she's like, she's like running on the wall. But it's, the the sense of speed's like you know in your face, so which is pretty awesome. On the screen in front of you. I'm so I oh my god I'm so happy I bought this new sound bar because this is gonna just sound incredible with the new sound bar. One of the things that worked really well in the last music was the soundtrack, the music by Solo Fields. So we've got him back into the our game, and we've made him love the freaking music. We give him more responsive to that. Okay, I'm just taking a look at other scenes here, just you know, seeing what I could see. The player decides to play the game. So when you run, we have more percussion. If you stop still, we'll have pass through chords. That's just awesome to hear. <laughs> like, like seriously, that's awesome. You know what they did? They did a similar thing in Remember Me, on um, that get the, the the game by Don't Nod. I think that was their first game, if I'm not kidding. But remember me had a, had a similar dynamic soundtrack, but in the sense of you fighting. In combat, when you would string together more combos at a time, the music would kick up and it would sound freaking awesome. When you got hit, the music would die down. So this is freaking awesome that this is gonna, gonna work in and flow with your motion in the game. So the, the better you're doing, I, I guess the more moves you string together in parkour, like the more fluid you, you come across, the music's going to keep going and you're going to get this really awesome beat and soundtrack and then when you stop it's going to dial down. That is freaking awesome. This is like, it, it's a really creative, it's a subtle creative thing that, that you'll notice at certain times throughout throughout gameplay and things like that and I, I absolutely love this. You know, just let's hear it. If you take a, a look here, we can kind of get a brief glimpse of it. If you stop still and have pass through chords, and then it stops. Basically, you control how the music plays by your actions in the game. We really want the player to instantly. I love that. That's freaking awesome to hear, though. All right, so we're taking a look here. More so. By your actions in the game. Freaking awesome. So much motion blur, though. Just the. Jumping, does the uh, the roll? Freaking love this. The detail is incredible too. You can see the stitching on her glove as she's rolling. It's great. Sim 
just trying to see if I, you know, can see anything else. All, all I see is the Callahan feel, symbol. Feel the flow, like the runner's flow. We don't want to That's awesome. Okay, look at this. That's a cool move right here. It's a slight jump. So, so she does a slight jump and then coils and then slides. That's awesome. And this is actually, if we take a look here before the scene transitions out, this is an interior spot, I guess considered technically. Well, it's, the building's under construction. The building is under construction, but you can just see, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. So that's going to be pretty nice. You should be able to know how to do a move. But the skill comes from where in the environment is the best route to go. Okay. Pretty cool. Sliding. This is all the stuff we've seen. There we go. We got another turn. Notice the subtle, um, the subtle puddles on the ground here. You can see right there the Can't puddles on the ground. For, for Freaking us to awesome. this game and for people to finally get their hands on it. Yeah, another cutscene here. I don't know if the cutscenes really got some nice bulk depth of field, but I don't know if um, I w I'm going to assume the cutscenes are pre-rendered because just from past experience with dice games, or they may be pulling up Star Wars Battlefront and maybe doing real time in game cutscenes, um, like they did for you know the mission section in Battlefront. I hope that's the case for this game. I don't know, um, but if that's the case, that's freaking awesome. Like, just look at the quality and things like that. So, really, 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 really cool. This strong character. Oh, there's Kruger. Oh, okay. This is a new scene. We have Kruger. She's spying on Kruger, and she, he's. I guess it looks like a prisoner. Or some someone's in there. And this you. I got another review here, and actually there's a splash, yeah, there's a splash of red paint here. Someone wrote me on Twitter and uh, was talking about the red paint. So, um, I don't know what the splash of red paint is. I think it's just, I think it's just a nice touch. I think that's all it is. It's just, it's it's just a small little touch that they're, they're just adding to the world, which is pretty cool. But yeah, tons of, just tons of stuff to see. Gosh. It's so beautiful just to look at. Like, it's so pleasing. <laughs> Gameplay and bring that out as an alternative to all the other games. Another cutscene. There's Noah hugging Faith. I guess says she just got out of prison. Powerful feeling. You will see the elegance. Another shot. Love this architecture. My god, it looks good. The, the, the nice bloom effects from the neon lights. And then uh, just... The city. Oh, here's actually here's actually our our first look at the civilian. Our, I guess these would be considered civilians. Um, this is actually the scene at the end of the uh, the the reveal trailer for Catalyst in E3 2015. Uh, this is the this is the end of that trailer. This part of the the section here is the end of that trailer, and um, you know with the pink leaves. And we also have a Kruger guard up here. And I'm going to assume these are civilians. So they are fully rendered, at least some of them are fully rendered, and I'm, I'm just hoping that it turns out that, you know, we can go and, uh, not, I'm not saying that we have to interact with them in some way, but that they'll notice us, you know, that they'll, that they'll be like, oh shit, you know, it's, it, that's a runner, or they'll feel some sort of uneasy thing, you know, just, I don't know, or maybe as you gain more notoriety in the city, they will fear faith in some way, or they will stand up for her. I don't know, I'm just speculating, but we'll see. And they will want to be part of that. You have five. This is pretty cool. Seconds to comply. You have five seconds to, five. to comply. <laughs> Her face is funny. She's like, oh fuck. <laughs> uh, so, nice subsurface scattering on her skin, though. It's pretty cool. Seconds to comply. For some reason, this scene doesn't look as good as the last one, because I compare this one. I, if I compare this one to um, the other one that we saw, which I can't find anymore, but huh, compare that to that. I don't know, maybe it's just a scene. It's just a scene in the lighting. Seconds to comply. that. Mm, that looks so good. <laughs> I love that. That looks freaking awesome. Please, my God, please let us go down on the streets. I want to explore every single inch of this city. No restrictions. 
well, I know that they're going to restrict us to where we're going to go at the beginning, and they're going to open up more of the city as we progress through the game, but when I get to the end of the game, right, no restrictions, I just want to go on the road, I want to go on, up on the roofs, I want to go into certain buildings, I want to just, I want to go everywhere, all right? I want to go everywhere, so I love this time lapse, so you can just take a look, look, look at the quality here. The, um, the, bloom, the bloom effect on the window right here, and then uh, the reflections off of the glass on this building, just unbelievable. That's what I'm... Full day-night cycle, and you can see just how the, how the city just, I mean, it, it, it just changes, you know, the, 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 the tone of it changes. At night, it's very much like an entertainment thing, and then like in the daytime, it's just, you know, like a business metropolitan you know, type of style, just freaking awesome. Like. What a gorgeous shot. What a gorgeous shot. Awesome. All right, so we have that. I'm gonna like that. And I'll favorite it as well. If I can find my favorites playlist. Favorites. There we go. Alright. Freaking awesome. So May 24th. Now let's take a look at the... Uh, really quickly the mag rope. Since I didn't do a video of it. I'll just cover it in this video. If I can fucking find it. Where's the mag rope? The mag rope. Here it is. Mm -hmm. The rope. They actually changed. I didn't realize they changed the layout of the new section, huh? All right, so let's take a look at the mag rope. Learn the thrilling gameplay opportunities of Faith's mag rope gadget. All right, Faith needs little less than her running skills, martial arts knowledge, and determination to fight the oppression smothering the citizens of Glass. Guns are not her way, but she does use a few pieces of high-tech hardware to, to traverse the city. The most essential one of these is Fate's Glove and its Manifold Detachment Gear Rope, or Mag Rope for short. Few people are more attached to this crucial piece of equipment than producer Jeremy Miller, who now is standing by to answer some questions regarding the Mag Rope's role in Mirror's Edge Catalyst. So, pretty cool. You get a nice high quality screenshot here of it, and uh... Just the, the quality of, of, of it, right? This is a render, you know, but the quality is just fantastic. So absolutely love that. What is the mag rope? The mag rope is a device one of Fate's forearm that can latch onto specific points in the world, allowing for unique traversal and interaction opportunities. When Faith first gets hold off, wait, when Faith first gets hold off the mag rope, you mean of? I think that's a typo. It's a typo. When Faith first, first, I can't even talk. <laughs> Mess me up. When Faith first gets hold of the mag rope early in Mirror's Edge Catalyst, she uses it to swing over gaps that are too long to jump across. Fantastic. Upon activation, the mag rope shoots out a carbon fiber, fiber line attaching to certain surveillance cameras. The swing is an extension of Faith's set and carries her momentum from running into the swing and the swing you have control over the speed and direction and when and how to let go. So that is pretty awesome. Uh, so what's gonna happen is you're gonna run, right? You're gonna be running and like a simple button press, I guess you're gonna look at it and then like a little button thing would come up. Something like a, you know, an Uncharted 4 with the grapple hook where you look at the, you look at the freaking, you know, the hook point and then the icon pops up. It's probably gonna be like that. But you're running, she shoots her thing and then she, it just pulls her, and you can actually change the direction of this as you're doing it as well, which is freaking awesome. So you can do like a big circle, or you can just go like straight up, and you can choose, you know, when to let go, which is uh, really cool. So that's awesome. And the speed as well, which is nice. Initially, the swing function is the only feature of the mag rope. There are, however, upgrades for the mag rope that Faith will acquire through the people she meets as her story progresses. So, um... 
you'll, I guess, yeah, as you're progressing through the story, they're just gonna give you the upgrades. It's not gonna be like, you know, oh, you have to work here towards, or you have to unlock a certain amount of items or spend this amount of cash in order to upgrade your mag rope. It's not gonna be like that. Just as you progress through the story, you unlock more abilities with it. Um, it's very important to note that um, Mirror's Edge is not an RPG, and it, I don't think it's intended as an RPG, and I think the developers know that, and so they don't want to put, like, RPG elements in there. They don't, they don't want to make it like Dying Light, where you, you can upgrade your parts, core skills and, and how fast you're going and how fast you can climb stuff. It's not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to get better as you get more acquainted with the controls and find out what more you can do. That was what the first Mirror's Edge was all about. So they're keeping with that style, which is nice, all right? How can the mag rope be upgraded? The first upgrade Faith will get for her mag rope is the VD Torsonio motor. <laughs> with, this, with the significantly more powerful motor, Faith can pull herself up to the attachment point, scaling vertical walls and attach new areas. Freaking awesome. So you'll be able to, yeah, you'll be able to just climb like much higher buildings with this uh, upgrade, which is pretty cool, and uh, reach new areas, nice. Later on, you'll get hold of the grappling tip. This replaces the tip of the mag rope with hook extensions. The grap, the, the, the edge hook, what do they call it in my video? The, the, the edge hook or something, something stupid like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which can be used as uh, to pierce and grab certain objects in the city. For, for instance, Faith may grab and pull out a panel, then quickly jump off of it before the panel retracts again. That is nice. I actually like that. So it's, it has like a puzzle aspect to it, which is freaking awesome. So really cool here. Um, I wonder, I'm curious to see if the mag rope is going to come in use with combat. And I'm almost... I'm almost speculating that it is. I'm almost saying to myself, that'd be pretty awesome if, okay, you're fighting some guy, right? You're, you're fighting him, all of a sudden, like a simple button press, um, you, you can freaking get this other guy, like, like um, I don't know, you can disarm him, for instance. Like, you're running towards someone who has a gun, he's shooting at you from, uh, from a distance. Use the macro to grapple his gun, pull it back to yourself, break the gun, and then that's it. And that'd be freaking awesome, so... Um, it, it could have some use in combat, um, we don't know yet, but that'd be freaking cool if it does, alright? There's another one of my ideas DICE can have. <laughs> uh, so just joking. Um, so when did you decide to equip with the Magro and Mirror's Edge Catalyst? I freaking laughed hard at this because, you know, you know, just, you know, just because I, 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 I just think to myself, the, the coincidence, I know, I know some people in my last video thought I came off as a little bit um, I, I, I guess, I guess you would say a little bit, uh, you know, just like deserving or entitled, you know, because, uh, because I said, oh, they're, they're basically using my ideas. I don't know if they did, right? But I, you do have to admit that the coincidence between what I said in that video and what we're now getting in the game is, is, it, it, it it's hard to not, you know, it's, it's hard to not say, hey, your video was was taken into, into some consideration at some point. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, that, that this is pretty cool. One reason is the more open city this time around. Crossing a highway or even a two-lane road. Mm. So I'm curious to see if a two-lane road means, hey, uh, you'll be on this street. Maybe you can use it to cross, you know, the street or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Um is a surprisingly far distance that isn't jumpable, all right? That's one of the reasons, again, why I suggested it. I suggested it, yeah, because you have these large gaps in like a standard city, you have these large gaps, and my idea was that you could jump, attach yourself to some hook or so, some, some grapple point on a building, it would pull Faith to the building and she would start running from the side of the building. That was my idea. So um, it's kind of working the same reason here. The mag group allows us to maintain a more believable and varied city, exactly, without being limited by the distance she can jump. It's one of the reasons why this you kind of need to have it if you want to create a very you know realistic city. Because not you know not all cities are going to have large buildings like all next to each other and it's all dense. I mean even New York has spread out areas in a city that's just how it is and you don't want to you don't want to feel claustrophobic you know you don't want the city to feel claustrophobic and you also don't want to frustrate the player by saying well what the fuck 
Now I have to run all the way around. It's gonna take me another 15, 20 minutes even though someone like me and someone like you, if you're a big fan, wouldn't mind, the common person doesn't want to waste 20 minutes feeling, uh, figuring out some puzzle to get all the way around the city. You know, that's one of the reasons why you want the mag rope in there. So, um, pretty cool. Uh, initially, Faith is a carefree runner, using her tools to interact with the city purely as a runner, taking shortcuts and getting to restricted areas in order to, in order to complete her runs. As her story progresses, she'll find more important ways to use the tech. It was very important to not make Faith feel like a superhero, though. The tool is an extension of her movement and not what makes her a heroine. Exactly. So, it's it's all. Whenever you're going to include something like this, you never want to, you know, kind of give the impression that oh, Faith is all of a sudden Batman. You know, even though it's kind of it it it's it's kind of comparable to that, right? But you want uh, you don't want it to feel overpowered, which is again why I'm actually happy that they they added certain points throughout the city. You can't do it all the time, like you can if you're playing Batman or something. It's only certain you know points. So, how can speedrunners take advantage of the mag rope? I think the swing aspect will be particularly interesting for speedrunners. Runner's vision will allow you to will allow you to, will show you excuse me clean safe swing points, but there are always more advanced and faster ways to get around. For example, early play testers, referring to those who played the beta, or who will be playing the beta, excuse me, discovered a way to raw run, do a quick turn. I guess I guess let's talk about the people who, who played at E3, because it's talking in the past tense. So I guess the people who played at E3. Discovered a way to wall run, do a quick turn, leap across a massive urban chasm, and just catch the edge of the activation area to swing across and cut a huge distance off the route. Let's let's let me read that again. I just want to envision this. Wall run, quick turn, leap. So raw running leap across like a like just a large open area and then just just at the right timing actually catch the you know the grapple point and swing across. That's freaking cool. So um, that adds a unique depth and wider variety of traversal possibilities, and it's pretty risky though. Yeah, you could have volunteered. <laughs> um, all right, what do players? What do you want players to experience and feel when trying out the mag rope? I hope players will see the mag rope as a natural extension of Faith's tool set. It is not just a gadget you will activate. It is part. It is part of Faith herself, and true to the true to traversal rules of Mirror's Edge Catalyst. There will be many riveting moments for players using the mag rope, leaping off a building during a run, hoping to jumped off too early, only to, only to have in catch just only to have in catch just a moment after you think it what? Only to have it ca oh, okay, I was reading that wrong. Only to have it catch just a moment after you think it won't. Those vertical moments are amazing. Special thanks to Industrial Gamer for the I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, but um, oh yeah, pretty cool. So we got to learn more about the mag. We haven't seen gameplay of the mag rope yet. I think they're holding that off until the beta. I think they're gonna let us experience that in the beta. But we do see a brief screenshot here of what it's gonna look like, which is pretty cool. And uh, looking forward to that. So all right. Um, oh, one thing I just want to get this out of the way really quickly. All right, this is gonna be kind of a rant regarding Mirror's Edge Catalyst. But and and it's not it's not the casual common player's fault. It's Dice's fault. All right. There is confusion going around still to this day that people don't realize Mirror's Edge Catalyst is a reboot, not a prequel, a reboot, all right? And it's not just people on my videos. I mean, every single freaking time there's a video regarding this game, oh, the prequel is going to be exciting or, or looking forward to this or, and, and everyone, someone mentions prequel, someone starts it up. Or someone asks, is this a prequel or a reboot? And I swear people give them, it's, you have people saying prequel, and then you have people saying reboot. And I, it's not, it's not, it's not the gamer's fault, all right? It is a reboot, this has been confirmed, but it's not the gamer's fault. It's DICE's fault, because they've been, when you use, when you, you want, when you want to use unique words and unique terminology, words that don't necessarily align with what the general public wants to know, like, it, it creates confusion. So, case in point, alright, if you type in 
Mirror's Edge Catalyst, a reboot or prequel, right? A thing's gonna pop up. Not, hold on for a sec. I think I type is. It was supposed to, okay, hold on. Wait. There it is. All right, take a look at this, read this. The title of Mirror's Edge Catalyst was formally announced in June 2015 prior to E3 2015. DICE producer Sarah Jansen confirmed that the game is not a sequel and will delve into fate, more of Fate's past while expanding on the original game's first-person perspective experience. It doesn't say this game will tell the story before the original Mirror's Edge. It just says, and there's supposed to be something that, um, that comes up if you type in the reboot version, but for some reason it's not coming up. Anyway, they, the problem is that, I'll tell you what they said last time, they keep saying Mirror's Edge is a rebirth of the franchise, right? The problem with, when you want to use these, these other words and terminology to describe something that is just as basic as, yes, it's a reboot, like they won't say the game is open world. You notice that, right? They won't say it's open world, but they'll tell you it's free roam. This creates confusion, all right? Because... People, you're gonna. This is what happens. People are gonna be like, "Oh, it's a, it's a rebirth, but it can kind of possibly have elements from the first game." So, is it a? It must be a prequel, right? And then you have people saying, "No, it's a reboot." And but the problem is that you need to just, you need to make it clear, right? You need to come out and say it is a, it is a reboot of the franchise. It is open world. And it, it is this and it is that. Just just use words that people are familiar with because people are going to take rebirth and when you're, people are going to take free roam and interpret it in many different ways, you know? And, and what happens is you have people call, calling this game a, a prequel still to this day and you have people who still think that Anita Sarkeesian, that rumor back then, is still like that, that she was still in the part of the development cycle and that she still got her hands on this game, even though this was confirmed months ago. You have people who are still saying this crap, all right? And again, you can't blame them necessarily, but you need, uh, I mean, you, you need to be clear with your audience, right? And you need to, you need to be able to, when, when you talk to them, you need to use words and stuff that they understand. If I came out and said, this game has guns from a first person perspective, right? People will be like, you mean like a first person shooter? And then I'd be like, no, not exactly. All right. It is, uh, it does have first person shooting elements, but it's this whole new layer of, of vision that no other FPS has had before. That confuses the fuck out of you. You know, it's like, what? You know, exactly. So, you need to be clear. You need to just, just say, hey, it's a reboot. Don't say it's a rebirth. Don't say it's open world. Don't say it's free roam. You know, people need people need this common terminology, or else you're gonna have confusion where people are arguing back and forth between it's a prequel or it's a reboot. It's a reboot. It is. That's exactly what it is. Let's logically think about this for a sec. The original Mirror's Edge had a very grounded art style that looked realistic for modern times today. Mirror's Edge Catalyst looks like it takes place in the year 2080 something or 2140 i don't know something like that it looks like a far futuristic game maybe later on in my lifetime we will get to something like this i don't know but how can you logically say that mirror's edge callus is a prequel when the game world takes place so much further in the future when there were no drones in mirror's edge there's only helicopters where you had security cameras and, and things like that, and there was no gadgets or, or bullshit. It wasn't anything like that, you know? So, it's a reboot. This is confirmed, all right? I don't blame you if you don't know this, if you don't, if you don't understand this. I blame DICE because they've been, very, they've been very weird with the communication of this game. So, I just need to get that ramp off my chest because uh, I just, I see it everywhere, right? I, I, I really do, like, still, did, I see it everywhere. And I hate it when people mention this, like, like, it's a prequel story. I'm like, cringe.
cringe, cringe, you know, and, or and, and when people claim that Anita Sarkeesian has, has worked on the game, I'm just like, cringe, cringe, cringe. So, DICE needs to be more clear with the words that they use. Just just use the common words that everyone knows. Everyone, everyone already knows that Mirror's Edge is original. It's a completely original game, original idea. No game has ever matched this game's, you know, gameplay before. A few games have tried, but so few have succeeded. Um, it's an original game. You don't need to communicate it originally, too. The game can speak for itself, so... All right, guys, that's it for my uh, my little video on Mirror's Edge. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, let me know what you guys think. I will all talk to you later. Have a good one.